Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Raj here and in today's video we are going to be talking about how did I go from a 1300 on the SAT to a 1500 on the same test. So yeah, the SAT is a test which is used in the US for admissions to undergraduate programs in all universities. In most years, the SAT is a mandatory requirement, but this year, which was an extraordinary year, they did not keep it mandatory and people who did not submit the tests were not disadvantaged. But generally, over the years, the SAT has emerged as a very popular test and everybody in the US take, have to take it if they want to go to college. When I was in grade 12, I ended up giving the SAT. But the first time that I gave it, I did not particularly study for it and I ended up getting a 1300 on the test. I gave the same test during my gap year after one and a half months of preparation and I ended up getting a 1500 in the test which is the 99th percentile mark. Now many people have this question that how exactly do you study for this test? Before you start preparing for the test, there's one thing that you definitely have to keep in mind. The SAT is not a test of intelligence. It does not test how smart you are. It is a test about endurance. It tests how well you can give a particular test and how well you can prepare for that test. The special thing about SAT is that every year the pattern of the paper is exactly the same and the question types are exactly the same. So if you're getting a 1600 on the SAT today, you might as well get around the same marks in if you give it some, time, uh, some other time because the pattern does not change. There are a total of four sections in the SAT. The first session is the reading section, which has 52 questions and you have 65 minutes to do it. The second section is, section is the writing section. For this, you have 35 minutes and it consists of 44 questions. The third section is a math test with, without calculator. This test has 25 minutes and 20 questions. And the last section is a math with calculator section. This has 38 questions and it has 55 minutes for you to solve it. There's also an optional essay section, which is not compulsory for most of the universities and I did not personally give it. The mark range of an SAT is from uh, 400 marks to a 1600 marks, 1600 being the highest and 400 being the lowest. So let's understand how exactly do you prepare for this test. The very first step that you need to do when you're preparing for the SAT is do a lot of practice tests. So first of all, there is a website called Khan Academy I think you might have heard about it. This website provides a completely online based program for you to study for the SAT and this is completely free. This program has a total of eight practice tests which are officially provided by College Board, the board which conducts this examinations. These eight tests are your holy grail for getting good marks. So before you get started on studying, you should give one diagnostic test on this website where well, then analyze how much you know about everything. So for example, it will identify if you're a particularly strong student when it comes to mathematics. So your practice schedule will be designed according to that. So if you're very strong at mathematics, it will keep your focus less on mathematics and more on the other parts. So you get a balanced study routine. So it, it makes a study routine for you, yes. So Khan Academy is definitely recommended, you must do it. Second thing that you must keep in mind is while doing practice tests, do not do any other tests other than the tests provided by College Board. So many other books like there's Princeton Review, there's Kaplan, they, they come up with their own tests. And I really, really advise you against that because this paper pattern deviates from what is there in the original tests. And the types of questions will be different. They'll trick you into thinking that they are the same, but when you give a real test and this test, you'll find significant differences. So only do these tests. Now, other than the eight original tests, there are also something known as the QAS, which are tests administered previously. So I'll put down a link in the description where you can find all the QAS tests from the old years. So let's talk a bit more about Khan Academy. So why is Khan Academy a really good thing? Most of the test prep, which uh, test prep programs, which are online are paid. Khan Academy, which is in fact better than all of those paid ones, is absolutely free. So you don't have to pay anything for using it. It has a completely automated routine made especially for you since the time you give your diagnostic test. And once you keep giving your tests, the 
your score keeps on increasing and they change your skills. If you're improving, they give you less of that type of questions. If you're not improving, they keep on giving you more and more of those questions. Also, one more thing that you have to keep in mind is while you're giving these practice tests, emulate the conditions that are going to be there on the test day. So go to a different room, sit in a room where you have no distractions. You don't have your phone, you don't have your laptop. You just sit with the paper, the question paper and the answer sheet and you keep bubbling the answers. So this way you'll get used to the mindset because you have to sit for three hours when you give this test. So it can be mentally challenging. So if you have a proper practice of this, it will not be challenging on the test day and you'll feel less nervous. For me personally, the reading test was an especially di difficult section. I always used to mess up the section and I, my score used to come, up, come down because of that very section. This was until I came across a book called Erika Melzer's. Erika Melzer's, of course, she's the author of the book, but she has written this book for the SAT. Now, I don't think the PDF is available anywhere, but you can obviously download the book. Uh, you can obviously buy the book from Amazon. This book is absolutely helpful because it has different chapters dedicated to different types of passages in the reading section. So for example, in the reading section, there is a literature passage, then there is a history passage, there's a social science passage and a science passage. And one of them is repeated, making a total of five passages. So in Erika Melzer's, there's a chapter dedicated wholly for a different type of passage. So you get a perfect idea of, I'm sorry. So you'll get a perfect idea of how to solve these questions. And remember, practice is the key for the SAT. Again, as I told you, this is not a test of intelligence. It is the test of how well you can take the test. So the more you practice, the more you're likely to get marks. So that's it from my end. I'll see you again in the next, next video. Until then, stay tuned. Thank you so much.